Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Dickity Bot, or top right corner as the pick Zerg. We have Megalus. Bottom left corner, we have Tim starting as the yellow Protoss. This is on Eclipse. You know, I'm actually kind of hoping for uh, Blue Storm randomly. <laughs> okay, I've seen a game on Blue Storm. I wonder if it's even in the map pool. Or maybe I've. Uh, why am I forgetting the name of the map that's the three player isometric version of Blue Storm that I've done a billion times? Whatever. Anyway, game one. Megalisk. I'm not sure what was with the gas cancel. Maybe tournament nerves? But Tim, showing some really strong play, was able to push it back. There was the brief circling run by... I actually really love Noggins, by the way. Thank you for the follow on Twitch. I really like the Burrow Zergling play thought. I thought that was really, really clever. I assume Tim's going to go for... Well, nope. Looks like he might go for a gateway first build again. This actually kind of looks like a Burrow Zergling right there. Man, why does this side of the map get the cra the crappy front? And it's crazy that you can, like, uh, just build a gateway on top of that, too, right? You could just build anything on top of that, and it's just got this sinkhole. And then you have to do... Actually, you know what would be interesting in an RTS is if instead of, like, having, like, air units, they had, like, underground units. By the way, we are seeing a nine-pool opener... Sorry, over-pool opener opposite side from Megalisk. <clears throat> and just going to wander that Overlord scout across the map. I feel like going pool early on a two-player map like um, like this is just demanded, especially because of early pro press, which can stop that natural expansion. Delay that natural expansion. I shouldn't say stop. Some with amazing players stop. But anyway, it'd be really going back to that thought. You always have like the air battle, right? But it'd be really fun. It's like, oh, you know, because like if you guys know anything about medieval whatever stuff, there was a lot of stuff about trying to go under people's defenses and like there's even like uh, instances of people mining and then having counter miners to deal with the miners that were trying to breach. And so you just, can you imagine living in those conditions? You're like, un you're just scared of siege all day and you're like listening for these guys burrowing underneath you. And then you dig a counter tunnel and just dump a, pun a bunch of tar and whatever or not, and, or try to like go in there and like fight swords inside. The anyway, nightmarish conditions. But in an RTS, I think it could be really entertaining depending on how it's done, just as a change of pace. Anyway, drone engaging the zealot, gonna delay it a little bit, actually pull it back quite a bit initially, <clears throat> creating enough of a delay to get some zergling defenses out for Megalisk this time. It looks like that hatchery planted without a lot of harassment. The probe trying to hang around and recharge some shields, but a lot of zerglings being produced, which, I mean, we gotta expect that out of Megalisk. Still no gas being grabbed. So, and this might just, is this just gonna be straight two hatch zergling rush? Might be, because I see no movements to grab any gas. Tim, upon seeing <clears throat> the Zerglings being produced, is already backed out. He did go for a Nexus behind this, but planting the Forge on the front. Now this is the question. This is just going to be a test of Tim's defenses. Third hatchery going to plant there to the north, but again, without the gas. Probe might be able to interrupt this one. Is not able to, but is at least able to spot it. Megalisk pressing the front. And again, so Tim with a really good defense game one. Let's see if he has a solid defense here again game two. More Zerglings making the way out. Looks like they want to go ahead and take out that probe. Now this... I mean, it's possible this is going to be a shift back towards 973, a very delayed 973. But usually you'll see a gas around like 205, 207 for various purposes. Zealot's now mixing it up with some probes to push those Zerglings off the line, but more coming. But still no gas from Megalus at this stage, just more Zerglings. So I think he is just going to go for a punch on the front. Still tacking away at that gateway. Cannon is warping behind this. Yeah, the Zelts just kind of patrolling around that corner edge, trying to do what they can. And... Uh, for, honestly, I think the Zelts are going to win this in a heads-up attack. But Tim backing up. Maybe because the damage is already there. Picking away at more Zerglings. That gateway dangerously close! Gateway down, which does pop open the front, but there's only four Zerglings left to make anything happen out of it. Finally, some gas from Megalisk, but he's still not mining out of it, and he's just continuing to produce more and more Zerglings. The Zealot's marching across the field, realizing how few Zerglings there are out on the front. Natural expansion up, huge economic lead. Megalisk now finally mining gas. Probe, I think, may be able to confirm that. The Zealot's... We're marching up, but it looks like they're going to turn right back around. Still, as things stand, I got it. Like, that was a lot of Zerglings for just a gateway. And the gateway is going to get rebuilt. Overlord making its way in. And it looks like this time Tim is just going to skip. So I don't see a cybernetic score anywhere. 
late save on Excor, wanted to skip to get that second gateway up just to make sure he was able to produce enough troops to deal with the Zergling Floods, which is a smart play, considering... And good call, because look... Yeah, Megalith continuing with the Zerglings, now teching to Lair. On a bit of a, a delay, and actually, well, we'll see how this plays out this time. On the swing around, but Megalith just sitting at 11 drones. So in theory crafting, which is completely not accurate whatsoever, Tim has twice the economy, or three times the economy, of Megalisk at this stage. Megalisk trying to drone up to filter things back out, but uh, Tim in a pretty good position after everything in the front. So only lost that gateway. Has that Stargate warping. Lair, again, not quite finished. I think the Lair timing is going to be a little bit better because of that delayed cybernetic score with that earlier gateway, and... I understand the emergency build of that second gateway, but it do, yeah, it did disrupt things a little bit. And I was able to confirm in between games, my brain is right. Yeah, you want that spire down about halfway, uh, as that Stargate's about halfway finished. Citadel of Adun being built. <clears throat> so we'll see. So Megalisk not out of this game yet, but economically is hurting. Zealot's marching out a little bit. Plus one weapons. Think delayed as well. Tim putting a second cannon down, a slew of Zerglings. So what is this? Control group and plus three? Plus four? I would expect plus four, but it's possible one Zergling just died out on the front and isn't accounted for. And I don't think they have speed yet either. So anyway, Spire halfway finished. I wonder if Megalisk is just going to try to go for a front door bust with the Zerglings and the Mutalisks with the turnaround, so let's see if the Corsairs can sweep out and first of all get a look at the Zerglings. The Zealot's moving out. They need to be careful because now a backstab running in, but there's a Zealot. Never mind, Zealot, not enough to blockade. Zerglings making their way all the way into the main. Maybe can even up some of that economic damage now. The Zealot's actually continuing to march forward to exact some damage. Let's see if these probes pull. So the probe's now trying to drone drill. Probe drill, I should say, in this instance. Able to get a decent amount of disruption. But the Zealot's just pressing forward. The Corsair is there, working on the Overlords. The Spire's finished. The, no Mutalisks in production that I see as of yet. Drones pulling off the line. Overlord down, so that's one. Tim currently at double the supply of Megalisk. And the Zerglings cleaned up, and Zealot's still standing now at the natural expansion. Also, Zerglings got cleaned up by the Zealot and the probes at the main. So Tim now in a commanding position with the turnaround. More Cursels moving out. So, like, even if Megalus takes care of the Zealots on the ground, which it looks like he is going to be able to with these Zerglings, he still doesn't have an answer for the Corsair threat. He's producing Scourge, so I take it back. He's able to get one, but isn't going to be able to protect the second Overlord. That's going to put him into the red. See if he can get another Scourge out. To deal with that, the Zealot's now backing off, but Tim's still in a fantastic economic position, all things considered. The Zealot's with leg speed actually splitting out. Sun Colony is also being built to the north. So Megalisk is going to survive this, but he's going to survive it kind of limping. The Zerglings, ooh, actually we'll see if this front gets rushed once again. There are four Zealots now, yeah, grouping up to re-engage. They've got plus one weapons, plus one armor now being researched. And Tim, he's got that Temple Archives actually going straight to Psystorm. So it's going straight for the mid-game rather than going for Dark Templar out on the field. Honestly, I feel like D Dark Templar might be worthwhile here considering how well he's pummeled the Overlord count. And I don't see any Scourge. Yeah, I don't see any Scourge out in the air. Oh, sorry, there they are. They're trailing the Zealots to keep an eye on them. Another something Colony being built, but not before the Zealots are here. And again, the Zerglings don't have plus one. Megalus going to GG again. So well played by Tim. Absorbing the early game attacks, pushing that economy, able to get damage done, and going to send Megalisk to the uh, loser's bracket, Tim Advancing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.